Alléluia. Alléluia. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so happy and I'm, it's a privilege for me to be here at this time. I just feel like I need to share this uh, this message. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to share about the wedding of the Lamb. The wedding of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. The wedding of the Lamb. We all know about the time and the season and you know even though we are trying to figure out when or when is the wedding praise god but uh many of us we say we are ready for the day of the lord uh, others we say the day of the lord is near but we are not taking the any initiative for the dreadful day of the lord we're not preparing we are not prepared. We are asleep. Amen. Everyone is asleep. The church is asleep. The nations are asleep. Praise God. Amen. It just takes the spirit of God for us to be ready. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I prayed and after praying, and I lay back to sleep. So as I was sleeping, deep, deep, deep sleep. So I saw myself laying uh, down in a place where I did not know where I was. And then I saw uh, one of the uh, uh, famous and presidents of this world he was signing and uh, like a, he called it a, like a presidential, an eminent presidential order. That's how he called it. Like when he signed it, every, it has to start working right away. You know, the order, it was order for, ordering for something. And it had to start working right now, right away. The law, he was right, he was signing, it had to start immediately. But for myself, I was asleep. Just laying next to him, and he was asleep. I was asleep. Deep, deep, deep in, in, in uh, uh, sleep. Why? Because I was asleep at the time when I was not be sleeping. Someone came to wake me up, but I was still sleeping. That is so sad. Hallelujah. What does the Bible say about the church? The dead church, the lukewarm church. Praise the Lord. The corrupt church in the book of Revelation chapter 3 and chapter 2. When Jesus, the Lord Jesus was showing us the church, how the church is. Even though we are saying, oh, the day of the Lord is coming, but we're not ready. Praise the Lord. Amen. No one is ready. I wasn't ready. I'm not ready. So us who are saying the day of the Lord is near, we are not ready. And the church is not ready. The Bible says in the Revelation chapter 3, verse, I'll read from uh, verse 3. Remember, therefore, how you have received and had. Hold fast and repent therefore if you will not watch i will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour i will come upon you hallelujah we do not know the time we are in what hour the lord is coming praise the lord we are just waiting we say we are ready we are ready but indeed we are not ready praise the lord and you have few names, even in studies, who have not defiled their, their garments. And they shall walk with me in the white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed with white garments, and I will not brought out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Praise the Lord. So we are saying we are ready. The time we are in, the things are happening in this world. We all see, we all know, hallelujah, but we are not ready. Praise the Lord. 
I wasn't ready. I was deeply in a sleep. Someone tapped me on me. I was asleep. The church is asleep. Christians, we are asleep. Praise the Lord. This dream challenged me a lot. It really challenged me. And let me read the book of uh, Amos. The book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 16 to 20. Amos 5, 16 to 20. And it says, Therefore, the Lord of hosts, that, therefore, the Lord of hosts, the Lord says this, therefore, shall be wailing in the streets. I'll read from verse 21. Okay, I'll read from verse 16. Sorry. There shall be wailing in the streets, in all the streets. And they shall say in all the highways, alas, alas. They shall call the former to mourning, to, the farmer to mourning, and skillful lamenters to wailing. In all vineyards they shall be wailing, for I will pass through you, says the Lord. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. For what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as the thought, as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or as though he went into the house, laid his hand on the wall, and the serpent bite him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? Hallelujah. The day of the Lord is coming. Who can stand it? Praise God. We are saying the day of the Lord is near. Hallelujah. A lot of some of us will say, We are ready. We are waiting for the rapture. We are waiting for the coming of the Lord. We are waiting for the judgment of God. Hallelujah. But are we ready for this day? Oh, we are asleep. We are the time we are in now. This is the time for us to see God. Why I got this dream? Yesterday, the whole day, I was, my, my spirit was grieving. I was asking myself. I felt there was something not, not right with me. I was uh, just within me. Like, I was like, I think I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not, maybe I'm not evangelizing enough. I think I'm failing the Lord. Praise God. Even when we are in quarantine, what are we doing? What are we using this time for? Praise the Lord. So the whole day my heart, my spirit was grieving. And then when I went to sleep, I prayed. I said, Lord, please help me. Remind me what I'm not doing right. So that is what he showed me. I'm asleep, spiritually asleep. Hallelujah. So we are not supposed to sleep. We're not supposed to, to relax. We're not supposed to be in vacations. Because the time we are in is the time when we are expecting the, the, the coming of the Lord. Live alone that. Souls are, are perishing. Hallelujah. But no one is ready. They don't know what is going on. The day is overtaking them. They don't know. Hallelujah. Let me go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 10. Chapter 10, verse 5 to 8. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Then Jesus, the, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and, not, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Hallelujah. Go, preach the gospel. Go, preach, saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what we're supposed to be doing. But we are, we are asleep. 
spiritually. Our spirit, we are, we are sleeping. We are in deep sleep. The day of the Lord is near. We are saying we are ready for the day of the Lord, but we are not. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our minds are asleep. We are not doing what we are supposed to. Go and preach the gospel and tell them the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is near. But we are very busy doing our work, doing what we are not supposed to be doing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Preaching the gospel, we are not supposed to be preaching. Not warning people, but the day is going to overtake them unaware. But here we are saying, the Amos said here in Amos 5, that the day of the Lord is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light. Is it not very dark with no lightness in it? The day of the Lord, it is dark. Hallelujah. It is dark. There is no light. It is a day when everyone will seek to die, but they do not see death. In the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 6. Verse, chapter 9, verse 6. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to, to die and death will free from them. And this is the day we are running for. This is the day we are expecting. This is the day everyone is saying, the day of the Lord is near. I am ready for the day of the Lord. I have heard people say, you cannot make it to heaven unless you are in this past, in this ministry, in this church, in this denomination. The day of the Lord is near. Jesus is coming to gather the church, to gather the saints, not the denomination, not the certain uh, church. Praise the Lord. This breaks my heart. And then when I was just there in my deep sleep, I woke up. When I woke up, I prayed, I said, Lord, what does this mean? Why was I asleep? What does it mean? Why was I asleep? And yet the, the presidential order, it was being assigned. I mean, it was being signed and it was supposed to start working immediately. So I got another dream. In this dream, I was in a place. I, it was a day, the wedding day. I saw a sister. We were there, many people. But then a sister was supposed to be preparing herself for the wedding. Hallelujah. Her, day, her wedding day was ready. The time was up. But this sister, she had done everything. But she was not ready. She was not dressed yet. Her hair was, unti was untidy. It was all disorganized. So she was sitting down. She doesn't know how to, what to do, how to fix her hair. I was, as I was looking, I just called one sister. I said, come on. Come and help this sister. Help her to tie her hair. So she came and she was working on her hair. The groom came. He was so angry. Hallelujah. He looked at her and said, you look at you now. Time is up. We are getting late for the wedding. So he went back to his room where the groom's men were dressing from. So this lady, the bride, she went to get dressed up. But her hair was untidy. She was not dressed. She didn't have a wedding garment on her. So when I went to her, I went, I followed, I say, you know what? I'm going to help you. I'll just stay around. I'll be steady. So that anytime you get a second, I'll come in. Let me know. I'll come in and help you. So you can't go to your wedding like this. Praise the Lord. So when I went, if she went in there, the, I was following her. I found all the groomsmen were already in their wedding garments. They were ready. And then the groom was ready, but the bride wasn't ready. So they gave her space to get dressed. So instead of her putting on her wedding garment, she went ahead. She called me to go and, you know, prepare her hair. To make her hair look nice. Praise the Lord. So I went in. I didn't see the groom. They were in another room. So when I was looking, just trying to, to organize her hair, but my spirit was like, she should have put on her wedding garment. 
But then I woke up again. I was, I was so sorrowful because the way she was, she wasn't not ready. So what? I wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. What? This is the church of Christ. The wedding of the, the, the wedding of the lamb is eminent. The wedding of Jesus Christ is ready. Praise the Lord. But we are not ready. No one is ready. The church is not ready. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 22. Matthew 22. And I'll read from verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like, is like land owner who went out. Um, Matthew 22, sorry. Okay. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited. Hallelujah. To the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are, are killed. And all the things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they, but they, were, they made light of it and went their ways. One of his own farm, another to his, to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was curious. And then sent out his enemies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who are invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in, and see the guests he saw a man there there who did not have one, uh, on a wedding garment so he said to him friend how did you come in here without a wedding garment and he was speechless then the king said to the servants bind him and hang and hang by him hand and foot take him away and cast him into outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Amen. this king prepared a, a wedding and invited many people. But everyone had an excuse. Everyone had something to do. Hallelujah. Amen. So what happened? As everyone went his own way, he decided to invite whoever. Praise the Lord. Amen. But among the guests who were invited, one did not have a wedding garment. Why? Why didn't he have? He wasn't prepared. He wasn't ready for the wedding. Praise the Lord. Amen. What made him not be ready? The desires of this world. Praise the Lord. He did not know the time he was in. Because the day of the Lord is coming when no one knows. No one knows the hour. No one knows the time. So this man, what the guest was cast out. Praise the Lord. He was cast out into the darkness. We read in Amos chapter 5 verse 16 to 20 that the day of the Lord is, is dark. There is no light in it. As we desire to see the day of the Lord. As we desire to, to be among the guests in the wedding of the Lamb. But we are not ready. The church is not ready. This bride was not ready. Praise the Lord. She was just preparing and she was not finishing preparing herself. Even though I went in to prepare her, but she wasn't ready herself. 
So many of us, we are, we are seeking to, to be among the guests in the wedding of the Lamb, but we're not ready. The things and the desires of this world, they're making us to scatter, to do things that we're not supposed to be doing. Praise the Lord. So I was so grieved in this dream. I was like, the church is not ready. This, group, this bride is not ready. The groom is ready. Praise the Lord. And I was thinking about it, about it. And the voice told me, everything has been done. Only one hour is left for the trumpet sound to be blown up. Brethren, all things have been done. For the trumpet sound will be sound and said only one hour is left. Praise the Lord. One hour is left. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 15. He says, I know your works, that you are neither cold no hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. And do not know that you are wrecked, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garment, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with the eyes so that you may see. Praise the Lord. We are naked. We don't have the wedding garment. Our eyes are blinded by the things of the world. Our eyes are blinded by the troubles of this world. Our eyes are blinded by the pain and the poverty tribulations, persecutions. We are blinded now. We don't, we're not focused anymore. Hallelujah. We're no longer focused. The things of the world, the pain, the tribulations, and the fear, the poverty, the anger, the sicknesses have blinded our eyes that we're no longer focused. Even though we say we are ready, we are not ready, but we are naked. This bride wasn't having any, she was not dressed yet. Praise the Lord. This took me back, some time back, like a month or two months ago, when we are on the, on the ground on a mission. When I was crying for the church, the Lord showed me a dream. This, it was a wedding day, like this wedding day. Right? Hallelujah. So this bride, we were in the church waiting for the bride to come in. And they announced that the bride was coming. But I looked, I was just standing at the door. This bride came in. She walked in. She was wearing a long white skirt. Hallelujah. She was wearing a bra, white bra. And she was holding a flower, a white flower, walking to the, towards the, the altar. Hallelujah. The bride was half naked. She was happy. She did not care. She did not know. She did not realize that she was half naked. Her stomach was out. Praise the Lord. The parts of her body was out. But she was going for her wedding. That is the church. We think we are ready. We are not ready. This bride thought she was ready. Going for her wedding. Think about it. How can a bride look at that bride? She's half naked. Her, her cords were out. The breasts were out. Even though she had the, the white, uh, white bra on. The back was out. The short. Everything else was out. Apart from the lower part of her body. And she had shoes on, white shoes, and she was ready going for the wedding. Praise the Lord. How many times, like we've been talking about, the day of the Lord is near. Rapture is about to, you know, it's, it's almost, it's, we are in the rapture time. We are in the end time as a church, as the body of Christ, as Christians, but we are not ready. We are naked. We say we are rich. We don't need anything. Some of us will say we are rich. We have money. We have everything we need. But money will not save us on the day of the wrath of God. Praise the Lord. The Bible here so told us in Amos 5, said, The day of the Lord is dark. There is no light in it. However much we are saying we are ready, we are not ready. Some of us, as I say, we are asleep like I was asleep. 
Praise the Lord. I mean spiritually asleep. Some of us, we are lukewarm. We're not cold. We're not warm. We are just in there because of the things that are happening in this world right now. Praise the Lord. So this woman wasn't ready. She is half naked. And then after that dream, I was like, what is this? How can a bride go to, you know, for her wedding half naked? As it wasn't enough, the Lord gave me another dream. It was a Sunday service. Then I saw men walking to church half dressed. These men, they have long sleeved shirts on, but the bottoms were naked. No underwears, no trousers. I want you to just think about this. You look at a man, because that we call it madness. When you look at mad people, those are the people you see, you meet on the way. You meet them somewhere, you know, they are naked. They are half naked. They are naked. Some of them are completely naked. And look at these men. They are walking half naked, have long, long sleeved shirts on. Their shirts were very well ironed. Their faces, they are washed. They are not dirty. You don't think they are insane, hallelujah, but they don't have underwears. They don't have pants on them, trousers on them, and they are already walking to church. Hallelujah. The wedding of the girl, of the lamb. This, this man, the guest was invited in Matthew 22. He didn't have a wedding garment. So as, as the more that, that we are claiming we are ready, they told me, that only one hour is missing, is, is left. Everything else is being done. One hour for the trumpet sound. Think about one hour. One hour is something short. It's not enough for us to prepare. It's not enough for us to tell the people. Because if you think about one hour, how many miles can you walk in one hour? How many words can you speak in one hour? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 20 verse 11 no revelation 20 verse 11 the wedding of the lamb i feel myself i'm not ready revelation 20 11 then i saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead, small, great, standing before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. The dead and heads delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his work. The death and heads were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Brethren, are we ready? Hallelujah. The great white throne, I saw the great white throne. To him who was sat on it. Jesus is going to judge the world. Praise the Lord. But the Bible here says everyone will be judged according to what they've done. In the book of life, every, if anyone was found not in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. Our works will testify for us. And we'll go with our works. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If my name is not there, because in a twinkling of an eye, I have sinned, expecting that the Lord is not coming right now. And then he comes. Praise the Lord. And then my name will be removed from the book of life. And then I'll be doomed. Hallelujah. Please let us be careful. Let us be ready. Let us not rely on the things and the life we think we are living in. Let us not rely on the self righteousness I was sharing with someone this morning and he said, for us, we are only listening to one voice. What a wicked generation. That them, they are listening to one voice. This is the, 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 it is the end time one voice that is confirmed by the Lord that they should be listening to. They no longer even read their Bible. Hypocrites. Hallelujah. People, we are doomed. Everyone is supposed to read the Bible. 
Hallelujah. Search your heart. Cry to the Lord. Let us not think that we are ready, we are good, we are fine, we are righteous, we are holy because we're in this so-called non-denomination ministry. Praise the Lord. In Hebrew, in Ephesians 5.27, he is coming to take the blameless and the spotless church, not the denomination, not the so-called ministry. Praise the Lord. Everyone here is called to serve God. Hallelujah. When we read in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, 8, they say he sent the people, go and preach the gospel. Tell the people, hallelujah, the kingdom of God is at hand. He did not send only Peter. He did not send only uh, Mark. He did not send Matthew alone. But he sent the 12. The Bible says he sent the 12. So why are, we delay? why are we lying ourselves? Because we say we are smart. Because we say we have only one voice. Praise the Lord. What a wicked generation. We are becoming blasphemous. I told you me I was asleep. So... What made me sleep? I rely, I'm relying on my own self-righteousness. So are you. So is someone else relying on the voice of a man. Bible say that one to him, hallelujah, who put his trust in man. Our trust now in man, not in God. And we found here that the, that the only, only Jesus is going to judge everyone according to his deeds according to what we have done in this body praise the lord not according to what the man of god has told us but according to what we have done self-righteousness is a great sin before god hallelujah let's read uh, revelation chapter 2 verse 2 revelation 2 verse 2 i know your works your labor your patience and that you cannot bear those who are evil and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not hallelujah and have found them liars amen have found them liars so the more we say i am ready i'm in this uh, denomination i'm in this church i'm in this ministry here he said i know your works your labor your patience and that you cannot bear those who are evil and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake who is this does this mean that one voice hallelujah I'm listening to one voice. We have only one voice in our country, in our church. No one else can speak. Even when the Lord speaks, we cannot listen to that voice because we are listening. We only have one voice. Blasphemers, wicked generation, evildoers, liars, haters of good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you have repent. Praise the Lord. Nevertheless, I have this against you because you claim to be righteous, because you claim to be ready for the dreadful day of the Lord, because you claim that you are listening to one voice, because you have not even doing your work, your assignment I gave, I gave you, because you are not serving me faithfully, because you have left the first love, you no longer pray, you no longer read your Bible, but you're saying you're listening to one voice, that the voice who, which God, uh, you know, confirmed in your church, in your ministry, you have lost the first love. You left the first love of seeking me as an individual, as a person, as a saint, as a, as a, a, a church. Praise the Lord. Remember where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works. Where have we fallen? Spiritual and sleeping. Hallelujah. Claiming to be righteous claiming to be ready, claiming to be holy, claiming that the day of the Lord will find us when we are ready. And then repent. Remember where you have fallen and then repent. Do the first work. When I called you, when you got saved, the words you heard from me, do those good works. Hallelujah. 
Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. You have lost the first love. You're waiting for your pastor, for your, you know, for your pastor to tell you what to do. If the pastor comes and tells you, you know, this says the Lord, this, 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 you don't even bother to go back and pray and seek the, the, faith, the God's face. Praise the Lord. You have left the first love. I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand. This bride was naked, even though she had a dress on, but it wasn't a, a wedding garment. Hallelujah. She wasn't having a wedding garment on. Why? Because she was taken. She thought, oh, I'm ready. I still have enough time. Hallelujah. But she didn't make it. The, the grooms were ready. The groomsmen were ready, but she wasn't ready. Why? Me, I am ready. I'm in this church. I'm this denomination. My pastor says this. My, we have a prophetess. We have the uh, prophet. We have the... Uh, uh, hallelujah. Who bewitched us? Church of God. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Revelation 16, verse 15. Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Praise the Lord. Look at these men who are going to church naked. We saw their shame. Look at this bride. She was just half naked and her shame was revealed. Praise the Lord. Blessed is he who keeps his garment. Hallelujah. We need to keep our garment clean. The garment of salvation. The garment that we received from the day we got saved. Praise the Lord. In the book of Revelation 19 verse 8. And to her, and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Praise the Lord. Then he said to me, Read this, right? Blessed are those who are clothed to the marriage supper. Hallelujah. Called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sake of God. Hallelujah. Because this the righteous saints, it the 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 the, the, the read in the, the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saint. Praise the Lord. Our righteousness and holiness, we need to clothe ourselves with those. Hallelujah. And then we'll be ready to the, to the wedding of the Lamb. Revelation 22, verse 8. Revelation 22, verse 8. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said to me, see that you do not, do not do that for I am your fellow servant and your brethren, the prophets and those who kept the words of this book, worship God. And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophets of this book for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust. Still, he who is filthy, let him be filthy. Still, he who is righteous, let him be righteous. Still, he who is holy, let him be holy. Praise the Lord. He who is holy, let him be holy. He who be is uh, uh, just, let him be unjust. And 12 said, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do these commandments and they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But the outsider dogs, the sorcerers, the sexual immoral, and the murderers and the adulterers, and whoever loves the, to practice a lie, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bride and the morning star. Praise the Lord. So what does Jesus want us to do? To be ready. Hallelujah. In this dream, my assignment was to prepare the bride, to help the bride to be prepared. 
of which I'm not doing now. Hallelujah. I'm just in quarantine. But there is something I still I can do. Hallelujah. We can still do uh, evangelism. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we need to be ready. We need to be ready because they said only one hour is left. The one hour is enough is not enough for us. I pray that the Lord will help us so that we can be ready and we can prepare in the name of Jesus. Amen.